what is up YouTube and welcome to another episode of Kubernetes in the cloud. Now I always believe in keeping it simple and fundamentals is key. That's why we're not going to use any automation and provisioning tools. We're going to take a look at the basics. We're going to use the Linode CLI to talk to Linode and take a look at what it takes to get the Kubernetes cluster up and running. Now all the commands that I'm going to use in this video is all linked down below. So make sure you check that out and follow along. Now without further ado, let's go. All right, so let's break this down. The first thing we're gonna take a look at is look at Linode and see how we can create a free account. Now, if you take a look at the link down below, I have a promo code where you can get a $20 uh, trial account, and this will allow you to test drive Linode, spin up virtual machines and load balancers to really try it out and see what it's all about. What we're going to do then is we're gonna install what's called the command line interface. Now, there is a Linode command line interface, but there's no Docker container. Now to install in the command line interface, we're gonna need Python. Now the easiest way to get this up and running is to do this all in a Docker container. So take a look at the link down below to my source code. There's a Docker file so you can follow along. This is the easiest way to get the CLI installed. Once we have the CLI up and running, we're gonna take a look and test drive the features that the CLI has. We're gonna use the CLI to log into our free account and sign in to Linode using what's called a personal access token. This will give us authentication and authorization to start working in Linode Cloud. What we will do then is we'll use the CLI to spin up the Kubernetes cluster. Now in Linode, Kubernetes is free to run, so you don't pay any control plane costs or any kind of management overhead like some other cloud providers. So this is really cool. You only pay for what you use. So if you spin up a virtual machine, a load balancer, that's where you start paying and volume. So what we're gonna do in this demo is we're gonna spin up a virtual machine. In Linode, a virtual machine is called a Linode. And then what we're gonna do is spin up a load balancer and this load balancer will give us a public IP address. So what we can then do is we'll use Kubernetes command line to access this cluster. We're going to deploy a hello world application which is going to schedule the container on this virtual machine and we're going to be able to send traffic via a load balancer to that container. So the first thing we're going to do is create a Linode account. Now the easiest way is to go to Linode.com and press the sign up button. Now if you take a look at my GitHub getting started guide for Linode, I have a link to a trial account. So there's a promo code you can enter that will give you $20 free credit to start off with. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go through this process. I'm going to create my account. I'm going to set up my billing and then we're going to use that account to log into Linode. Now every cloud provider will ask you for credit card details. This is normal. They use this to prevent fraud and they also use it to check and ensure your identity. Now in order to access Linode through the command line interface we're going to need to set up a personal access token. Now in order to do that go over to cloud.linode.com to your dashboard click your username and then click on my profile and then what we're going to do is go to API tokens and we're going to create a personal access token. Now if you want to be more specific you can set up all the permissions and the expiry date for that um, personal access token. I'm just going to call it getting started Kubernetes and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say read write on everything um, because I'm going to throw away this personal access token once I'm done. So I'm going to click create token and it's going to give me a personal access token that I can use in order to sign in. I remember everything I do on this video is in GitHub. So there's a Docker development YouTube series, a GitHub repo. Um, this entire series is in a Kubernetes cloud folder. So I have Amazon, Azure, DigitalOcean, Google, Linode. So we're going to take a look at the Linode file. Now, in order to get the CLI working, what I've done is I have created a Docker file to put the um, Linode CLI in. So it's very easy to install because you're going to need Python and a specific version of Python as well. So you can take a look at my Docker file. What I've done here is I said from Python 3.8. So I've also used the Alpine version, so it's very small. And then I add bash because I'm going to use bash inside the command line. And then I install the CLI saying pip3 install Linode and I specify a specific version that I want. That, that ensures that the thing doesn't 
doesn't break and pull always pull the latest um, version so to build that what i'm going to do is i'm going to say change directory into kubernetes cloud linode if we do ls we can see we have a docker file right there then i'm going to say docker build dot dash t and i'm just going to give it a tag so now we have a command line interface built in docker we can go ahead and run that container and access linode so to do that i'm just going to step up a couple of directories so that i'm at the root of my repo because i'm going to want to mount this entire git repo into the container so i can do all the stuff inside the container now to run the cli container what we're going to do is say docker run it we're going to remove it when it's done we're going to mount our entire source code into a working directory we're going to set the working directory we're going to say we want to run bash we're going to specify a working directory and we're going to pass in the name of the image so doing that will provide us with a bash terminal and now we can say linode cli and we are at the cli ready to go i've also pushed the cli to docker hub so you don't need to build it you can just say docker pool and docker run so in order to start the cli we need to log in that's the first thing we're going to need to do so i'm going to type linode cli it's going to ask me for my personal access token i'm going to go ahead and paste that say enter and now it's configuring my user it sets everything up it's got a default region so now we can set the region that we want to use now linode operate out of a couple of different regions so i'm going to pick um, singapore as it's the closest one to me then it's also going to ask me what default types of linodes or like basically virtual machines to deploy i'm just going to pick um, the smallest one i'm just going to go with one it's going to ask me the default images to deploy basic linodes i'm just going to pick one again it doesn't really matter so we can now see it's set up a default user for us it's written config file to root config linode cli um, so you can feel free to look at that config and adjust it and then what we can now look at is how to play with the command line so there's a bunch of available commands we can run so the, the linode cli documentation is really good um, we can manage accounts domains we can manage our virtual machines um, we can spin up a linode kubernetes engine we can do networking um, there's also images object storage regions and volumes um, if you ever want to look at the help text again you can just type linode cli dash dash help it'll print out all this stuff and available commands again um, if you made a mistake during the configuration you can also call linode cli configure command to reconfigure it so the next thing we're going to want to do is explore the Kubernetes engine. Now to do that, you type Linode CLI LKE dash dash help. This will tell you all the things you can do around the Kubernetes ecosystem. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is three things. We're going to need to know what machine we want to deploy as part of our node pool in Kubernetes. We're going to need to take a look at what regions we want to deploy these machines to. And then the third thing is we need to take a look at what um, type version of Kubernetes is available and what version we want to deploy. So just at a very high level you can list the clusters that you have you can create a cluster you can view that specific cluster you can update the cluster and then once you're done you can delete the cluster you can also list the node pool so kubernetes allows you to attach different pools of compute to your cluster so you can have one pool that's just standard machines you can have one pool that's storage optimized you can have another pool that's gpu optimized that's entirely up to you it gives you that flexibility you can go ahead and create a pool with the create pool command you can view the pool you can update the pool delete the pool so very cool document documentation very flexible we can also then get access to our cluster using the cube config view command so once we have a cluster up and running we want to get the cube config file and configure our kubectl to interact with the cluster we also use the command to say let's list the versions of what versions are available in kubernetes for this cloud provider all right now to before we create our cluster what we're going to take a look at is the lke help command now as i stated earlier we need to do some information gathering before we can run the cluster create so i've put the commands down here so the first thing we need to do is run linode cli regions list what this will do is give us the list of regions where all the different tech, tech stacks are available in so we can see here i'm going to go with ap south which is singapore and we have kubernetes and linodes and load balancers available you want to make sure that the region you deploy to can actually support kubernetes and it can run load balancers and nodes so the next bit we're going to do is we're going to take a look at what version
versions of Kubernetes are available. So to do that, we're going to say Linode CLI LKE uh, versions list. This is going to give us the list of versions that's available. So we're going to deploy a version of Kubernetes. We're going to specify the version. We're going to specify the region. And the last bit we need to do is say Linode CLI Linode list region. And whatever region you are planning on deploying to, you want to make sure that the type of machine is available in that region. You can also go over to the Linode dashboard. And if you click on Linodes, they have all the plans out here. So they have Nanode, which is like really tiny machines. They have standard, which is probably what you're going to be interested in. Um, and they also have dedicated CPU as well as high memory and GPU based machines. So when you create node pools in Kubernetes, it allows you to, to really be flexible about the different workloads you want to run. So you can have different departments in your company have their own node pools or if you have like GPU intensive workloads or you have high memory workloads like caches, you can pick um, a high memory um, node pool type machine. Now I've put a link in my um, GitHub repo to the uh, Linode CLI documentation, which is really great. They show you pretty much everything you need to know about creating a Kubernetes cluster. So what I've done is I've taken all the information that we've gathered, we've come up with the region we want to deploy to, we've come up with the version of Kubernetes we want to run, and I'm going to specify a node pool. I'm just going to deploy one node pool with a small standard machine, and I'm going to say I want one machine in that node pool and you can also specify a tag this allows you to i mean for like billing purposes you can tag different node pools or different clusters um, with different depart departments or different teams um, i'm just going to give it a basic tag and what i want to do is then say take this command pipe it to the terminal and let's hope for the best so that was really quick we can see it's um, given us an id a label and a region so it's go gone ahead and provisioned our kubernetes cluster and if i go over to the dashboard I can see that I have a Linode that's busy booting so it gives you kind of a live update of um, this node pool or this machine that's coming alive so I have one machine one Linode um, provisioned and if I go over to Kubernetes we can see I have my cluster up and running version 1.16 um, the region it's deployed to um, we can do a bunch of things here we can download the Kubernetes config we can edit and delete the cluster if I go in here we can see a little bit more metadata about the cluster $20 a month um, the storage the um, region and version we can also download the cube config file straight from here and we also have an api endpoint we can go ahead and add tags we can see our node pools are here as well so i have one linode machine we can resize the pool we can also delete the pool and keep adding more pools now this is a very nice user interface for managing your cluster now, for those of you who are new to Kubernetes, please check the links down below. I have a Kubernetes getting started guide where we actually focus on how to get Kubernetes set up locally with Docker for Windows and Mac, and then also take a look at how to configure kubectl to access a cluster. So what we're going to need to do now, now that we have a cluster up and running, is we need to figure out how do we access the cluster. So what we're going to do is we say um, we run the LKE help command again, and we can see that we can list clusters. So we run the list clusters command we can see now that we have a cluster up and running we grab its id and then we say linode cli lke cube config dash view this will go ahead and download the cube config for our kubernetes cluster so we can start using it with the kubernetes command line so it looks like this command only goes ahead and uh, views the cube config file if you want to download the cube config file what i found what i had to do is come over to the dashboard and press the download button for the cube config file that'll go ahead and download the file to our machine and what i can do then is i can go ahead and open up the file so it's gone ahead and downloaded the cube config file that we can now use to access our cluster so what i've done is i've gone ahead and downloaded my cube config file and i've just downloaded it into this folder called linode called config.yaml now because we're running inside of a container um, what i'm going to do is i've put a link how to download the, the command to download kubectl so i'm just going to run curl that'll download kubectl and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to give it chmod um, execution permissions and I'm going to move it to user bin so now we can say kubectl and we have kubectl installed inside of our container so now that we've gone ahead and installed kubectl we need to tell kubectl where our cube config file is and now because we've also downloaded the kube config file into the Linode folder 
called it uh, config.yaml, we can run the command now, looks for the cube config environment variable. So we can go ahead and set that environment variable to the location of our config file. Then what we can do is we can say kubectl get nodes. And you'll notice that now we have access to our Kubernetes cluster. We can see our nodes um, listed here and we are ready to go. What I'm gonna do in this video is show you just how to interact with the cluster. So what we're going to do is we're going to say kubectl create ns. We're going to create a namespace called example app. A namespace in Kubernetes holds all our resources together. So it's kind of like a resource grouping mechanism. What we're then going to do is I'm gonna, just going to change folders into uh, Kubernetes. Because in my Kubernetes folder here, I have access to a ton of things like config maps, deployments, ingresses, secrets, and services. In my Kubernetes development guide, I cover all the different uh, types of objects in Kubernetes. So be sure to check that out if you're not familiar with Kubernetes. So my example app here is going to require a secret. So we're going to go ahead and deploy a secret into the example app namespace. It also needs a config map. So I'm going to apply in the example app namespace a config map. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply my deployment. Now, if we briefly take a look at this, a config map is just a way of storing configuration in Kubernetes. So my app needs a config file called config.json. It also needs a secret so I go over to secret um, this is how you would store a secret in Kubernetes and then also the deployment.yaml now a deployment file in Kubernetes is basically the desired state how we want Kubernetes to manage our application so you can see here we specify two replicas we're going to run a hello world Python application we can do things like liveliness probes so Kubernetes will watch our application to make sure it's alive and um, responsive and then it'll also we can specify um, resource limits to prevent our our application from becoming a noisy neighbor. We then specify volume mounts to our secret and our config, and that's pretty much the deployment spec. Now, how do we expose this application to the public? Now, in Kubernetes, that's where services come in. So if you take a look at the service folder, we have a service.yaml, and this is how we tell Kubernetes that we want a load balancer. Now, Kubernetes is completely cloud native, meaning we don't have to know how to provision a load balancer in Linode um, cloud. This, this could be running in any cloud provider. Kubernetes will know how to go to that cloud provider and provision a load balancer. And then what we're going to say is we want all port 80 traffic on that IP address to go to our container port, which is 5,000. So to deploy that app, that service, I'm just gonna say kubectl apply inside the example app namespace, and I'm gonna apply the services, YAML. Now let's take a look at what we've deployed. So if you say kubectl in the example app namespace, we say get deploy. We can see that we have a deployment two out of two. So there's two pods running. Let's take a look at those pods. So if we say kubectl get pods, we can see we have two pods up and running running ready to take traffic and now we've also exposed um, the the pods using a load balancer type service so if we say get service we can see that we've gone ahead created a service of type load balancer which now has an external ip so we can take this external ip and we can head over to the browser and we can just punch in the external IP. We can see our application is running. So we've got an application deployed in the cloud, exposed through a load balancer um, with a public IP, all good to go. Now this gives you flexibility of um, using an ingress controller as well. So if you're interested in ingresses, check my videos, links down below. I have a guide on traffic as well as Nginx. Now just to show you, if you head over to the dashboard again, and because we provisioned the service of type load balancer, you go over to the node balancer section and you can see we have a load balancer that's up and running with a public IP. So you can kind of come into this portal if you provision uh, persistent volumes, load balancer type services, um, and any kind of like extra machines and node pools, they'll appear under under here. So you have Linodes, you have volumes, and you have node balancers. Now remember once you're done to come and clean up your resources, otherwise all your trial account and um, credit will be used. So what you want to do is go ahead and say Linode CLI LKE cluster list, get the ID of the cluster, and then use the delete command. So we have a cluster delete command and we can specify the ID. So once that is done, you can confirm by coming to the dashboard and you can see the Kubernetes cluster has now been deleted. If you head over to Linode, it takes about a minute or two, but then the Linodes on all the node pools and things you've added should also drop out and be deleted automatically. The last bit that you have to clean up is the load balancer. So it looks like the load balancer does not automatically delete. So what we're just gonna do is just say, click on that and go delete. Are you sure? Yep, and go ahead and delete the load balancer. So that is 
is Linode Kubernetes engine. Now remember if you guys are new to Kubernetes check out the links down below to my Kubernetes development guide. Also stay tuned and stick around for more videos on other cloud providers as well. Also check the links down below to my CI CD as well as Kubernetes monitoring and secret management guide as well. And let me know down in the comments what sort of videos and stuff you'd like me to cover in the future. And as always like and subscribe and until next time peace.